Over the course of more than half a century that's produced 38 films and counting, Godzilla has been reinterpreted as everything from the embodiment of a nation's fears to a symbol of the planet's strength. And as we've discussed in a lot of previous videos, Godzilla has evolved across four distinct periods, Showa, Heisei, Millennium, and Reiwa with the American MonsterVerse coexisting alongside Toho's stop-and-start reinterpretations. But even with so many films produced over the years, there could have been dozens more. From direct continuations of previous films, to failed pitches that make even the strangest Godzilla movies seem sane in comparison, the King of the Monsters could have had a vastly different history on film. Want to know why these stories never saw the big screen? Let's take a trip through the history of the many unmade Godzilla movies. Once Toho made their first Godzilla sequel with Godzilla Raids Again in 1955, the sequel pitches started flowing. The first of these unmade sequels is Bride of Godzilla? Written by actor Hideo Unagami and given unsolicited to Toho producer Tomoyuki Tanaka, with two more drafts written before Toho passed. Here, the Godzilla Countermeasure Center creates the giant humanoid robot The Bride of Godzilla to pursue the kaiju into the hollow earth, as well as a human-sized robot named Eve. Cue a mermaid family, giant fleas, a second Anguirus, a giant octopus, and a climactic fight between the Bride and Goji, where the two nearly get it on before the military detonates an atomic bomb inside the robot, sealing off the hollow earth and leaving Godzilla's cock-blocked fate ambiguous. In 1978, Tanaka had Bride rewritten during the ongoing Godzilla hiatus between the Showa and Heisei eras, with writer Hidechi Nagahara changing the Bride into a robotic female Godzilla, makes more sense, and retaining the giant flea, which would lead to Shakiris in the eventually made Return of Godzilla. After the success of King Kong vs. Godzilla in 1962, its screenwriter Shinichi Sekizawa quickly went to work on another, titled Continuation, King Kong vs. Godzilla. Here, a brand new cast of characters rescue a child from a mysterious island where Kong lives. But due to the apes bonding with the child, he pursues the fleeing rescue mission off the island. Godzilla is first encountered dormant and possibly dead under the sea due to his fight with Kong in the last movie, with his body taken by an amusement park. However, nothing can revive Godzilla until Kong's electrical powers, remember those? Restart the kaiju, leading to two fights and the efforts of both the military and the family being chased by Kong to stop the monsters. Eventually, Kong and Godzilla fight in an exploding volcano, with the volcano's eruption consuming both of them, an inconclusive end typical for Godzilla movies of the time, with the script noting that Kong and Godzilla's fight had exposed the ugliness of society, with nations refusing to help the family pursued by Kong out of fear for their own safety. However, Toho decided to not pursue another Monkey vs. Lizard movie, and instead attempted to make... King Kong vs. Godzilla was originally envisioned as King Kong vs. Prometheus by Kong co-creator Willis O'Brien, with the ape fighting a giant humanoid created by Dr. Frankenstein's son. However, legally shaky production deals with Toho led to the concept being reworked into King Kong vs. Godzilla. Once sequel efforts fell apart, Toho returned to the Frankenstein idea. Frankenstein vs. Godzilla, written in 1963, acts as a sequel to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, with the heart of Frankenstein's monster somehow pulled from the creature and shipped to Hiroshima, irradiated by the atomic bomb, and quickly growing into a massive humanoid. The monster's rapid growth causes the JSDF to worry that it will soon start eating humans, and, in their fear, they turn to Godzilla still trapped somehow in the ice from the end of Godzilla Raids again. The military lure Goji into a fight with the monster, giving Godzilla a face turn a lot sooner in his filmography than what would actually happen. Much like the end of the scrapped Kong sequel, a convenient volcanic explosion swallows up Frankenstein's monster and knocks Goji into a river, sweeping him away. Pretty underwhelming. Toho then decided to have Godzilla meet the recently debuted Mothra instead, and Frankenstein would eventually debut in 1965's Frankenstein vs. Barugan, which uses the atomically irradiated heart plot. 
may be the wildest what if in Godzilla history. Batman Meets Godzilla was envisioned as a meeting between the King of the Monsters and Adam West's Batman at the height of his popularity, acting as a sequel to West's 66 movie at a time when Batmania hit Japan and led to local manga interpretations. With both Toho and William Dozier, the man behind the Batman show, eager to make the crossover happen, two proposals were created. One from Japan and one from the US. The Toho proposal by Shinichi Sekizawa is unavailable, but Dozier's story has Batman, Robin, and Batgirl travel to Japan to stop a mad scientist who claims to control the weather, but in reality, puppets Godzilla through his mastery of robotics. Batman's antics in Japan include a kabuki show samurai fight, evil robots, a foot chase with Batman and Robin naked except for their masks, and Godzilla falling in love with Batgirl like a King Kong knockoff. Eventually, Batman fights and defeats Godzilla by tricking him with a fake female Godzilla mating call and knocking him out with a bomb to the face. To permanently solve the problem, Japan builds a rocket around Godzilla and blasts him into orbit for good, which is, maybe not coincidentally, the conclusion to the original Gamera, released in 1965. But the quickly declining popularity of Dozier series, which was cancelled by 1968, acts the possibility of what would have been an unforgettable, for one reason or another, Godzilla movie. Yoshimitsu Bano's Godzilla vs. Hedera in 1971 ends with a tease for the Smog Monster's return. And for a time, Bono was set to return to the franchise in 1975, at first having Goji fight the giant starfish Gezira, and then proposing a direct Hedera sequel set in Africa, where the monster would be attracted to the pollution of developing nations. However, producer Tanaka despised Hedera, and eventually replaced Bono with the returning Ishiro Honda for Terror of Mechagodzilla at the end of the Showa era. Bono never gave up on his dream of another Hatera movie, and we'll touch on his journey more later in this trip through history. Beginning in 1970, Toho and Tsuburaya Productions, most famous for Ultraman, planned Godzilla vs. Red Moon. The film sees the arrival of two new kaiju, Red Moon and Erebus, ambiguous flying dragon creatures, who mate and give birth to an offspring, Halfun. Unfortunately, the baby is kidnapped by an evil business and dies in the process. Kinda messed up. Baby kaiju are generally safe in Godzilla movies. Cue a rampage by the parent monsters and the arrival of Godzilla, now in his hero phase, saving the day and sparing his enemies. That's because my man is cool. He's tough. He's powerful. He's the best. The best, alright? The project fell through, but the companies worked together to make Daigoro vs. Goliath. Despite 1972's Godzilla vs. Gigant being released only one year after Hedera, there were several unmade scripts that led to the finalized movie. Karu Mabuchi's Godzilla vs. the Space Monsters, Earth Defense Directive, first came up with Megalon alongside King Ghidorah and Gigan, who were being controlled by an alien brain named Miko. The return of King Ghidorah exclamation point now has King Ghidorah, Gigan, and Mogu as the invading monsters, with Godzilla, Rodan, and Varon teaming up to save the Earth. Godzilla vs. Gigan, the return of King Ghidorah exclamation point, now has King Ghidorah, Gigan, and Megalon invade and fight the heroic Godzilla, Anguirus, and Larval Mothra. Further refinements turned this version into Godzilla vs. Gigan. In 1973, the film that would become Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla went through multiple iterations. The first being Giant Monsters Converge on Okinawa, Showdown in Zanpamasaki, by Shinichi Sekizawa and Jun Fukuda. Here, aliens from Garuga set on conquering Earth send a robot monster named Garugan to Japan, where it fights with Godzilla, Mothra, and Angiris. The script was then rewritten by Sekizawa and Masami Fukushima and retitled Showdown in Zanpamisaki, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. With Garugan becoming Mechagodzilla, Mothra replaced by a new monster, King Balgan, and Gigan was added. Another rewrite would solidify the story as Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, with King Balgan becoming King Caesar and Gigan disappearing. We now enter the nine year period between the Showa and Heisei eras, where Toho struggled to resurrect their star. The first attempt was King of the Monsters Resurrection of Godzilla in 1977, written by Ryuzo Nakanishi with Jun Fukuda, a frequent Showa director, set to direct. This would be a full on remake of Honda's original movie, including a radiation attack on a Japanese ship, The Legend of Gojira on Odo Island, and Dr. Serizawa and his oxygen destroyer killing the kaiju. 
with the scientist sacrificing himself to prevent the weapon getting into the wrong hands. Honestly, it's kinda surprising that Toho and Tanaka would consider a total remake two decades after the original, given how sacred the film has been treated. Still, Toho decided against it and briefly attempted a US collaboration with UPA Productions in 1978 that went nowhere. In 1979, a short story titled A Space Godzilla was published in Starlog magazine. Based on a rejected script that opens with a nearly dead Godzilla washing up on a Japanese shore, dying of diabetes of all things. Godzilla's brain is then removed and communicates with a psychic, revealing that its real name is Rosan, an alien from the planet Godzilla. Rosan is also female and pregnant. After a debate about what to do with the monster, Godzilla is reassembled, put in a rocket, and blasted back to her home planet to reunite with her husband. But once home, the planet Godzilla is invaded by the evil humanoid Sunarian aliens, who kill our lady Godzilla, leading to a war led by the husband, Kunin, and his daughter. They win. Yeah, I don't think I need to explain why they didn't make this movie. This is the second most bug nuts Godzilla story I've ever encountered. Here's the first. Also in 1979, Yoshio Aramak's God's Godzilla is set during World War III in the year 1980X, with the war interrupted by the arrival of godlike aliens who resurrect Godzilla as an angry dark god, likened to Kali, for an apocalypse related to the Book of Revelation. But wait, now the aliens send down Jesus, who is controlling Godzilla. The aliens, evil Godzilla, and crazy Jesus then wreak havoc across the world, and Jesus reveals in a screen projected above the Great Pyramids that this will inevitably create mutant descendants of humanity, as Godzilla becomes a sphinx and Jesus ascends to heaven. Holy shit. Next, we have Shinichi Sekizawa's Godzilla legend, The Asuka Forest, in the late 70s. Set in the year 2000, where Godzilla is sedated deep underwater and Japan has created the enormous supercomputer known as the Asuka Fortress, which it uses to defend itself. But the fortress becomes sentient, destroys the Japanese government, and decides to exterminate all life. You know where this is going. The human heroes awaken Godzilla, who does battle with the fortress alongside them, saving the world. Pretty standard stuff. And while multiple drafts were written, this one didn't get far. There are two separate unmade movies titled The Resurrection of Godzilla. The first from 1980 was proposed by Tanaka and Akira Murao, which ignores every movie except the original. Here, a monster from Chinese myth called Bakan awakens, which can shapeshift between a sea creature, monkey, and dragon, while radioactive waste dumping in the ocean awakens a sleeping Godzilla. Eventually, Godzilla destroys Bakan by siphoning power from a nuclear reactor, only to then target Tokyo. Japanese forces are able to destroy him by luring him to an island and initiating nuclear fission within the kaiju that blows him up. However, the film's predominant theme of nuclear danger is solidified in the film's ending, where Godzilla's corpse is revived off the shore of an American nuclear plant. After several rewrites, Akira Murao and Hidaichi Nagahara created a brand new resurrection draft that was very similar, but with Bakan eventually becoming a hybrid of its three forms, and multiple super weapons used by Japan. Eventually, this was rejected in favor of 1984's Return of Godzilla, which shares a lot of similarities to both, including mutated sea lice, the dormant Godzilla, and its ties to the original, ending the hiatus and beginning the Heisei era. Just a quick one here. First distributors from Hong Kong put an ad for Star Godzilla in the May 7th, 1980 issue of Variety, which had art of Godzilla, King Kong, Anguirus, and UFOs. But this was apparently done without approval by Toho, who quickly shut down any efforts to make the movie. As I covered in my Heisei video, in 1983, American director Steve Miner of Friday the 13th Parts 2 and 3 fame and writer Fred Decker, who would go on to make Night of the Creeps and Monster Squad, got the approval of Toho to create an American remake titled Godzilla King of the Monsters in 3D. The film would bring Godzilla to life in stop motion. Its story is mostly set in the US, as an awakened Godzilla is enraged by the death of its baby and rampages across California. Eventually, our military protagonist kills Godzilla with a missile down its throat, but is caught and saved by the dying monster when he falls from the jet that killed it. 
The decision to let the US be the one to bring back Goji caused Japanese fans to form the 10,000 member group called the Godzilla Resurrection Committee that called for Toho to make their own film for Japanese audiences, causing Tanaka to decide on releasing a new Japanese Godzilla movie jointly alongside Miner's American movie. However, Miner and Decker's Godzilla movie was never picked up by an American studio, all of whom saw the stop motion as cost prohibitive and the creators as not famous enough to be worth it. Toho and Tanaka's new Godzilla movie, however, became The Return of Godzilla. Another potential collaboration with US producer UPA, Variety reported plans for an animated Godzilla movie to be released in 1988 under producer Henry Saperstein, who had also produced Hanna-Barbera's Godzilla cartoon. The choice behind animation was due to UPA wanting a smaller budget for their movie, with animation done in Japan and pre- and post-production done in America. And while this was planned for a release alongside Godzilla vs. Biollante, it never moved forward. In 1991, the story that would become the third Heisei movie was designed to be a sequel to both Biolante and Mothra vs. Bagan, which was also never made. The underperformance of Biolante, a crime, that movie rules, caused Mothra vs. Bagan to be turned into Godzilla vs. Bagan, and then cancelled altogether in favor of a remake of Godzilla vs. King Kong, where Kong would be turned into a cyborg by an evil lady scientist he had fallen in love with. But legal issues blocked this from happening, which led to Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, which itself had a briefly considered sequel, The Return of King Ghidorah, which went nowhere. You still with me? Next is Godzilla vs. Gigamoth by Koichi Kawakita and Minoru Yoshida, where a new Mothra hatches alongside its radiation-mutated twin, Gigamoth. The radiation attracts Godzilla, leading to multiple battles as the twin moths both evolve. There's also a psychic lady that can merge with the moths to control them, and Godzilla is eventually dragged to the bottom of the ocean by a fully evolved Mothra and a cocoon. If some of these elements sound familiar, it's because the concept would be reworked for the Batra including Godzilla vs. Mothra in 1992. The last few years of the Heisei era saw Toho take an enormous amount of pitches as they wound down this incarnation of Godzilla. Some were pitches, some outlines, some full-fledged scripts, with many being rewritten and reworked into new versions that were also not made. Here's a rundown of many of those concepts, all pitched between 1992 and 1995. Godzilla's counterattack has terrorists plant a bomb inside Godzilla that turns him into the unstable Red Godzilla. A lot like the eventual Burning Godzilla, a crack team is shrunk down and injected inside the King of the Monsters while he battles Mechanicon. Mecha Mothra was a proposed sequel to a version of Godzilla vs. Mothra where Mothra dies at the end, only to return as a cyborg here. Godzilla vs. Berserk acts as a pseudo Mecha Godzilla movie, with a crash landed techno organic alien growing massive and copying Godzilla, with humanity fighting both in the Super X3. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla Metallic Battle is basically Godzilla's counterattack, but with Mechagodzilla instead of Mechanicong, which I mean like, yeah, duh, of course that's what you're gonna do. Godzilla vs. Kaiser Ghidorah would bring Ghidorah back as a new, more powerful version from space, but the production of Orochi the Eight-Headed Dragon scrapped these plans. Godzilla vs. Astro Godzilla is an early draft of Space Godzilla that includes space insects, Mothra returning, and Miki Sagusa being kidnapped. But budget cuts forced a new version, which was Godzilla vs. Neo Godzilla, where the outer space copy of Godzilla was now made of crystals. Another draft turned this into Godzilla Super Wars, which was bigger in scope, included other alien races, and the return of Mechagodzilla, Garuda, and Super X. One more draft, and this became the final Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Post Space Godzilla and with Toho looking to end the Heisei era as the US version of Godzilla was set to premiere, the pitches for a seventh and final film came in faster and faster. Godzilla vs. Cthulhu has the king fight H.P. Lovecraft's signature Dark God. Toho Godzilla vs. Tristar Godzilla would have the classic Godzilla fight the new US incarnation, before continued delays pushed the US version to 98 and post Godzilla's death. Godzilla vs. Giant Monster Varon brings back Varon, last seen in Destroy All Monsters, as an end times villain, with both Godzillas surviving at the end. Godzilla Great Naval Battle debuts three new radiation mutated sea creatures who want to prey on Godzilla's energy, with almost the entire thing set at sea alongside an aquatic Mecha Godzilla. That's sick, I love Metal Gear Ray. Godzilla vs. Cyber City has an AI powered city and an android merge to form Genocide Jaguar, 
with both Jaguar and Goji sinking into the Earth's core at the climax. Terror of Space Godzilla brings back the alien copy, now in orbit as a satellite raining destruction down on Earth, with our kaiju father and son struggling to fight back. Godzilla vs. Godzilla is the title of two pitches, one where the original 1954 Goji fights five multicolored Super Sentai Godzillas, and another where Godzilla Jr. travels back in time to 1954 to fight the original. Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla has the 54 Goji spirit return and possess Little Godzilla, transforming him and fighting Heisei Goji to become the true king and destroy humanity. Godzilla vs. Baragiris also has the 54 Goji Ghost, now possessing a new kaiju named Baragiris, which is basically an amalgam of Anguirus and Baragon. Godzilla vs. Chaos is Godzilla and Little Godzilla against a new space kaiju named Chaos, fighting over who will absorb the psychic energy of Ghost Godzilla. Godzilla vs. The Divine Beast has a kaiju inspired by the Indonesian demigod Garuda fight Godzilla to erase evil from humanity's hearts. Godzilla vs. Bogon was again pitched, with Bogon having been turned into the final boss of the Super Nintendo game Super Godzilla in the time since. Godzilla vs. Godzilla Jr. pits father against son, with the now adult Godzilla turning heel and dying from G-Force attacks in the finale. Godzilla vs. Deep Sea Life is basically just what the title says. Godzilla vs. Biomonster is very vague but ends with a double suicide. Hmm, I don't know about that. Godzilla vs. Super Nuked Godzilla is our main man vs. another Godzilla Saurus that has been extremely mutated. Godzilla vs. Lambda has no known details, but I'm assuming it's not about a computer function. Godzilla vs. Baru Baroi has a near death Goji fighting Baru Baroi, which has mutated from the effects of the original Oxygen Destroyer. Meanwhile, a villainous scientist is creating the Neo Oxygen Destroyer weapon from the cells of the new kaiju. Baru Baroi slowly grows and mutates by consuming animals, including Angir becoming bigger than Godzilla and growing multiple heads. In the end, both die, either in battle or due to the use of the Oxygen Destroyer. Obviously, this was rewritten and became Godzilla vs. Destoroya, one of my favorite Godzilla movies, ending the Heisei era. And that's 26 different unmade Godzilla sequels all pitched in the span of about three years. Alongside all these Toho pitches, Tristar was busy assembling their own version of Godzilla after its parent company Sony Pictures bought the US rights in 1992. This version, written in 1994 by Terry Rossio and Ted Elliott, and revised by Don McPherson, with Jan de Bont to direct, has Godzilla woken from deep underneath Alaska due to a military operation. Godzilla then appears around the globe for the next decade, with the wife of a man killed by Godzilla during his awakening leading the search for the kaiju. Godzilla Godzilla is captured, and we find out that he was created by an ancient civilization to fight an alien doomsday creature, sent to Earth to wipe out humanity and prepare the planet for colonization. Godzilla and this creature, which has morphed into an enormous griffin, do battle in Manhattan, with Godzilla eventually victorious with some help from the military and the woman who chased after him who eventually forgives the kaiju. The project got far enough along for concept art and sculptures by the awesome Stan Winston and his team to be made. With this Godzilla kinda looking like a duck, disagreements between writers, director, and studio over the proposed budget, which would have been at least $100 million, caused DeBont to leave the project by the end of 1994, which led to TriStar hiring Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. The rest is, regrettably, history. Emmerich's film was originally set to lead to a trilogy, with the sequel simply referred to as Godzilla All Caps 2. The sequel begins with Godzilla dead and Nick Totopoulos feeling guilty over what's happened, soon discovering and rescuing the last surviving baby Godzilla. The baby escapes into the ocean, and two years later a mysterious path of destruction leads the government to believe that it's Godzilla's fault. Nick and a team of returning characters eventually find Godzilla with its own offspring. The now adults bonded with Nick. We eventually find out the worldwide destruction is caused by a giant mutated insect named Queen Bitch and its hive on Monster Island. There's military battles, kaiju fights, and in the end, Godzilla and its last surviving young, the Runt, survive. Clearly, there's a lot of Toho influence here, and maybe it would have been better than Emmerich's first movie. Why didn't it happen? Well, probably because nobody fucking liked that Emmerich movie. The general idea was used for Godzilla, the animated series in 1998. With Emmerich's trilogy dead, Michael Schlesinger, who wrote the US translation of Godzilla 2000, proposed an American sequel to Toho's film, where Godzilla travels to Hawaii and battles the military, who briefly defeat him, only for a giant lava bat named Miba to erupt from a volcano. 
To combat the new kaiju, the military revives Godzilla for a fight. However, by the time Schlesinger pitched his vision to Sony, they were no longer interested in Godzilla and had decided to let the rights lapse. After his success with the Gamera trilogy, Toho brought on Shusuke Kaneko to make one of their disconnected millennia movies. His first pitch was Godzilla vs. Kamakuras, which brought back the giant praying mantis from Son of Godzilla in the hopes of using modern CGI for the creature. However, when Kaneko found out that Godzilla vs. Megaguirus was in production, he scrapped the idea due to insect similarities. Kaneko's next idea was in an alternate reality with a powerful Republic of Japan and has an astronaut slowly mutated by a space virus, turning into the strange but friendly M. The arrival of Godzilla causes M to go on the attack, trying to protect his country from the invading kaiju. Eventually, a near-death M is able to grow strong enough due to the self-sacrifice of his daughter to defeat Godzilla and disappear into the sea with him. Kaneko thought the idea was too depressing and dropped it. Kaneko's next pitch revolved around the concept of guardian monsters, each starting out as a new creature and evolving into a stronger form later in the script titled Godzilla x Varon, Baragon, and Anguirus. Giant monsters all out attack. Once Kaneko submitted his draft, however, Toho requested that he use more bankable kaiju in the aftermath of Megaguirus performing terribly. As such, Varon and Anguirus were swapped out for Mothra and King Ghidorah with a few other small tweaks including more realistic military weaponry. And the result is the best film of the Millennium Era. In 2002, Karokawa Corporation, who had the rights to rival kaiju Gamera, approached Toho for a crossover between the two. Obviously, the two would battle each other, but no other details have been made known, as this was likely just a discussion between the production companies. Toho wasn't interested, and continued on with the Millennium series, while Karokawa made Gamera the Brave in 2006. A crossover between these two has been a dream for kaiju fans for generations. Will it ever happen? Who's to say? But it seems unlikely right now. Gamera Retrospectives, coming soon. In the early 2000s, Yoshimitsu Bano returned to Toho with his own company, Advanced Audiovisual Productions, determined to finally make another Godzilla movie. What Bano proposed was a film titled at various points as Godzilla 3D, Godzilla vs. Deathla to the Max, and Godzilla 3D to the Max, putting the king in IMAX 3D format fighting a new kaiju named Deathla able to transform between Locust Swarm, Mushrooms, and Giant Monster. And as the two fight around the world, with Goji flying once again like in Bono's Heidera, Godzilla is empowered by singing children against an enemy that embodies pollution, much like his sludgy predecessor. After Final Wars, the studio decided to give the rights to Bono, but with two conditions. Bono would need to secure funding elsewhere, and Toho would have to sign off on any story and kaiju designs. So from 2003 through 2010, Bono, who planned to direct and produce the film, alongside co-producers Brian Rogers and Kenji Okuhira, rewrote the film several times and entered into negotiations with several different production companies. Eventually, Bono caught the attention of American studio Legendary Pictures, who wanted to start a new series of feature-length Godzilla movies instead of Bono's single short film. Renegotiations led to Bono and company returning the rights to Toho so that Legendary could reach an agreement to co-finance and distribute Godzilla's new movies starting in 2014. Bono's 3D movie never came to pass, but he is directly responsible for the creation of the MonsterVerse. Shortly before Legendary struck their deal with Toho, screenwriter Gary Whitta came up with his own proposed adaptation titled Godzilla Forever. All that's been revealed is a tweet from Whitta showing his short initial pitch, which revealed that the 1954 original would likely be in canon, with decades of Godzilla attacks culminating in the kaiju being severely wounded and disappearing. The movie would have a futuristic setting, but nothing else is known and it never moved forward. During the production of Shin Gojira, Hideaki Anno proposed an alternative take on his new version titled Shin Gojira Raids Again, which would be done in the style of the Toho Champion Festival, which defined the kid-friendly second half of the Showa era. Anno's idea was to create an inexpensive, more conventional, broadly appealing fight movie for audiences that didn't like Shin, kinda like an emergency backup plan. Ano gave his proposal to Toho for collaborator Shinji Higuchi to direct. However, this never went anywhere, and details haven't been revealed by anyone involved. 
Will it ever happen? After Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider, it's possible. But with a new Toho Godzilla movie by Takashi Yamazaki due in late 2023, it might not happen. And with that, we've reached today. At the time of this video's publication, Godzilla is more alive than he's been in decades. With a new Toho movie coming in 2023, and another Godzilla Kong Monsterverse movie due in 2024. Reinvention is the key to Godzilla's long life. And if all of these unmade movies have proven anything, it's that even after years of dormancy, the king of the monsters will always come back. Thanks for watching today's video, and I've finally come back to making another Godzilla video. And not just another Godzilla video, but the latest in my long line of unmade sequels videos. This mashup of two long-running series for my channel has been brewing in the back of my mind, but it was kind of daunting given just how many unmade films I'd have to cover here. In total, there's more than 50 different unmade features covered in this video, which is pretty insane. And of course, a large portion of those were pitched in the last few years of the Heisei period. Just absolute insanity going on right there. And as a huge fan of Godzilla, and someone who is really interested in all these alternate never made sequels, I had a blast making this video. There are just so many strange, absolutely bug nuts, why would you ever even pitch that ideas here? And for the most part, I'm glad that these weren't made instead of the Godzilla movies that made it to the screen. Although there are a few that I wish we could have seen. Batman meets Godzilla is just so crazy, I don't know why they passed that up. People would have never stopped talking about that. Godzilla vs. Hatera 2 is also pretty interesting. And any movie where people get shrunk down and injected inside Godzilla is something that you just gotta see. I really hope they do that someday. And God's Godzilla, like what the hell. I also would have liked to have seen Jan de Bont's Godzilla instead of Roland Emmerich's. And Godzilla Great Naval Battle just sounds like fun. Like a Godzilla that's set all at sea or underneath the water? That sounds pretty fun actually. Wet Godzilla is good Godzilla. And a time travel story, that's pretty sick too I'd say. And of course, I'm a huge fan of Shin Gojira, so Shin Gojira Raids Again is one of those movies that I really, really hope they make at some point. Just go for it, Toho. Come on, we want to see it. I would love to hear what unmade Godzilla movies you would have liked to have seen, because there's just so many possibilities out there. Also, I'm sure you've noticed by now, but you are listening to my brand new theme, which is made exclusively for my channel by Mono Memory, a fantastic artist and someone that I had a lot of fun collaborating with to make this new theme. So I hope you're enjoying it right now. And please go check out Mono Memory. I love their work. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons for their continued support. And if you'd like to be a patron, it's only a dollar a month for early access to every video and exclusive Patreon-only reviews. So until next time, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves and watching some awesome Godzilla movies.